Okay, so here's the deal. Last night, Trappy, Raphael, messaged us saying that he has some new firmware for us to test. This firmware is for the new TBS Tracer system, something that we've been working with TBS on for a really, really long time, being a really massive project, but hopefully this will be the last firmware before we go to release. Let's update it. While that's updating, let's get into what actually comes with the Tracer. Firstly, we have the choice of two different modules. We have the standard JR style for things like the Radio Master or the Tyrannus. And then we also have the light version for radios like the Tango 2. I'm right now upgrading mine so I can actually try that. And then also things like the X9 Lite or the X Lite. Moving on to the receiver itself. It's a diversity receiver, which is really, really cool. Uh, same form factor as Crossfire, and I'm pretty sure it wires up the same way in the production version as Crossfire. And the antennas are really nice too, because they're really small, they're really easy to mount, and they also tend to get prop struck a lot less. Okay, so we're at the park now, let's go test this out. We were actually here before already, but I was running some stuff that I couldn't actually show you, so all that video was kind of useless. But, um, got this configured now, uh, with the tracer. Everything's ready to go, let's do it! Okay, so let's go for a fly. I've actually done a lot of flying and the bulk of the testing already. So I think, you know, we've got a nice park. It's a really nice day. Let's talk about what Trace is all about. And just do a nice little freestyle and enjoy the park itself. Okay, let's do it. And we're up. So some things to note just right now off the bat, I am using the Radio Master radio for this and I normally use a Futaba. So lately because we've been doing a ton of testing I have been switching back and forth a lot with different radios so I'm not really adapted to anything at the moment. This is sort of just you know me getting a feel for it. I have done a couple packs before this but um yeah still not that super like 90% refinement yet. But uh, let's get straight into actually what Tracer is all about. The basics, it's a 2.4 GHz control link, so some of the benefits of that mean that we have a lot more bandwidth to play with, which means that you can have more people flying at the same time with a really, really high refresh rate. Um, as far as the actual link itself, this is currently running at 250 Hz, and it's also running a little bit lower latency than standard Crossfire. We've done a ton of work in the background into just trying to refine that code as much as possible and a lot of that will filter down into the normal Crossfire system. But there are some inherent benefits of just running 2.4 in that you've got a lot more bandwidth. As far as where this will be used, or at least where we're sort of anticipating it'll be used, a uh, big market that it's targeted at is racing. Obviously low latency, high refresh rate, this thing feels really, really butter smooth. Um, yeah, the quad just sounds dead smooth. It's really, really nice. Able to put really fine inputs in. The disadvantage with it is the fact that you do have less penetration through objects and less distance you can travel because of that. Um, also in areas where there's really high 2.4 interference, it won't perform because, well, there's a lot of interference. So if you're flying close range, it's really good. Obviously region specific, if you've got a lot of 2.4 uh, noise in your area, then you're probably still better off with 900. And if you're doing long range, also 900 will still be the better system, the original crossfire. But for any close range racing, and I'm going to argue freestyle too, uh, the extra control just feels really good and flying is all about the experience. So yeah, this is just like super smooth, super nice. Uh, it's definitely noticeable going from Crossfire to the Tracer. So I think for me, I'll be using still a combination of the two since I do a lot of international racing and a lot of filming. So there are some scenarios where say for this close range stuff, Tracer is really the better solution. 
But then, when you're going out long distances, when you're flying aerosol interference or behind a lot of walls and things, that's where 900 is really going to come into play. And the crossfire system is still super ridiculously good, so... Yeah. Both brilliant systems, but you can just see this is... Really smooth, really nice. Um, honestly, it's one of those things I think you have to try. Just sort of flying it here, I'm like saying, oh, it's really nice, it's really smooth. It's, um, you can probably hear it in the video how smooth it sounds because you've got that extra resolution because the pick control is a little bit more to work with. But really, when you fly it, you do notice that sort of smoothness, that consistency. Another way, too, if you want to get that back instantly with Crossfire is to actually go to the diversity module. So you've got better pack loss. This is a diversity system, so you're running two antennas. You can run single antenna if you want, and we have done it. But we actually ran no antenna at one stage. We, we ran no issues. antenna at one stage and we were having issues. We actually still got a pretty decent range out of it. We haven't done proper range testing besides just flying from one end to the other end of this park. Uh, TBS has other people that their job is to do range testing. And in the given conditions, like if you have really good optimal conditions for this, it can perform really insanely well. So I guess with many things like RF, it is very condition dependent. It depends on where you're at. Um, for example, normal club races for us in Australia, this is definitely going to be the better choice system. However, for things like your FAI, uh, Turkey race, where they have a lot of 2.4 interference, FAI, we actually ran broadcasting cameras on the drones themselves that transmitted on 2.4. And so for those races, uh, Futaba never worked, Spectrum never worked. We obviously haven't tested this yet at one of those races because we're in COVID, so we haven't been to any races, but uh, just the nature of interference, I don't think it will actually work in those scenarios. But then for any of your normal club races, and also depending on what frequencies and stuff you're allowed to use, uh, this is really going to be, I think, a killer solution for both racing and freestyle. Even though it's more targeted at racing, like I said, because it feels better, because it's less latency and more refresh rate, you can just put tons of micro inputs in that you could normally never get away with and just be that little bit more precise. So the footage does end up coming out smoother a lot of the time. And best of all, you're actually in the same ecosystem still, aren't you, with Crossfire? Because it's still using the same... Yeah, it's still Crossfire protocol, so you literally plug this in. That's what you do. You don't have to run any special lures yeah, or anything to make it work. Is it all works the same, doesn't it? Yep, still using Crossfire shots, so it's all synced to your radio. Um, that's another thing too, actually. We are working with Futabra at the moment to try and update their radios to run better with... Uh, but they've been really slack. Well, they haven't yeah. got back to us. Well, we'll see what happens by the time the video is released. Hopefully they do. Hopefully things have changed. They have. It's been a bit slow getting onto them, but um, if you're running OpenTX, like Radio Master, uh, this will work perfectly with it. Tango 2 works absolutely flawlessly with it, so um, definitely if you're running Crossfire Shot, it's a really nice upgrade because it's also synced to the radio. Uh, but yeah, this Tracer, I mean, I don't think there's too much more to say other than if you can give it a go, definitely try it. I think if you're in the position where it's a good option to use, then you're going to really, really enjoy it just because it does feel a lot nicer. But it is still not a total replacement for Crossfire because normal Crossfire has the range that you just can't achieve. With and penetration too, behind buildings and stuff like that. So it depends how you're flying, really. Yeah, it's really scenario dependent. We should probably make a I separate video about it. I have a for me, it. I'm going to probably switch into this completely. Yeah, I think Sorry, for me... I'm probably wrong. Unless we do long range follow videos and yeah, stuff Yeah, I think like your that. race quads will there. Yeah, race quads for sure, for me. Yeah, I think um, I've got three GoPro carrying quads. Uh, right now they're still all running Crossfire and I don't plan on changing them. I think I'll probably build a separate like super light agile thing that will run the Tracer. It's sort of my close range, sort of, you know, just having fun in a park full sending. So I'm definitely going to build one with Tracer. Um, but yeah, for me it's definitely using a blend of both because there are areas where one works better than the other. Um, it's not clear cut, it's just one is the best solution. It's all dependent on what your situation is. Please forgive. 